Welcome to another video. This one is going to be twofold. The first part is a product review on what you see here, which is an ER32 collet chuck with a set of collets, which has been kindly sent to me by Pee Wee Tools. I'll be providing a review on this product today, as well as performing a demonstration so that you can see um, exactly how this can be used. So I'll be showing some of the benefits of using a collet chuck like this one compared to a drill chuck like this. Um, the collet chuck offers a much more rigid setup, which on any machine tool is always a good thing, but particularly on a small machine, anything you can do to increase the, the stiffness or the rigidity of that setup, the better. So there's a host of options available on the website. Um, I'll show uh, what the web page looks like here now and then um, these collet chucks are available in a, a range of sizes they range um, up to ER40 so they go from ER16 all the way up to ER40 and um, and they can be adapted to a, a, a range of of holders like this one this this is for the A size tool post but they range from the um, AA all the way up to the E size tool post. And you can see here that um, there's a, a range of, of ER collet chuck holders uh, available through the, the PV Tools website. But this, this collet chuck itself, um, if anyone's unfamiliar with these, the idea behind these is that the, the collet can fit into the nut like so. So that clicks into there. And then this, the taper, the tapered collet fits into the female taper of the chuck, so that when this nut is tightened down, <coughs> the uh, the diameter of the, the the bore of the collet reduces and clamps down onto the shaft that you are wanting to hold in there. So so that's how that works, and this is a really nice little set. So this set here, this range is from uh, one millimeter all the way up to 20 millimeters. Um, so there's 20 collets in this set and, and the collets come in a really nice little wooden box so they can be held really securely. And these sit, they, they nest really nicely in this uh, neoprene uh, insert here. So they won't rattle around and they're, they're really securely held in the, in the box. Um, to tighten the, the nut down, the clamp nut down onto the collet chuck, um, there's this C spanner that comes with the set as well. So that's really nice. And there's a couple of spanner flats on here, which um, these on this particular chuck, um, that, that will take a, a 36 millimeter spanner to hold that still uh, whilst you clamp the nut down. So my initial impressions on this set is that the quality is really, really good. And... Um, there's no burrs, the finish is, is really nice, um, and it's, all the parts are clean, they're not covered in, in horrible grease, um, and the, the, they seem to be ready to go really. So uh, so my first impressions are that um, it, it's a really nice product. Um, these retail for around 120 euros on the website, uh, depending on, on the size. Um, which is a good price, I think. I think that's good value for money. But just as an example, one of the things that you can do if you want to do any um, counter boring, or um, for example, the uh, the video that I, that I released um, fairly recently on the, the dial gauge holder for the lathe, I needed to produce um, a bore where the center line was on the edge of the workpiece. And to do that, I needed to be able to cut using a slot drill. I needed to cut on the end face. A drill wouldn't have done it, um, and a boring bar wouldn't have been suitable for that application. So the way I did that was I, as you may have seen on the previous video, and if you haven't seen it, I'd encourage you to go and watch it. Um, I was holding a slot drill in the carriage inside this three-jaw chuck. And, um, and of course, by definition, 
um, it has three jaws, therefore all of the clamping is done through three points here. Um, so all of that clamping pressure is over a very small area. Well, the downside to that is um, a lack of rigidity. A better way of doing that would have been to use a collet chuck. Um, but as an example, I have here um, a 12 millimeter carbide end mill. And, um, and so what the setup would have looked like for that would, um, if I just place this collet into the nut, like so. So that's in there, that can't fall out, which is quite handy. There's a little clip in there that keeps that retained. And then I screw the nut down partially and then the end mill fits into there. The nut would be clamped down with the C. That then goes into the, the boring bar holder, which I'll cut to now. So the collet chuck simply fits into the boring bar holder like so. And then these bolts clamp down the split in the in the holder and it holds that um, collet chuck really, really securely in place. So that makes for a really rigid setup. But the, the real um, rigidity comes from where the, the tool is mounted in here. So instead of having three line contacts around the tool, what we've got here is a, is a complete clamping down all the way around the circumference of that tool. So there's a really good connection between the tool, the collet, the collet holder, the uh, boring bar holder to the tool post to the machine. And, and that makes for a really good rigid setup. So what we've got now is um, I've got the ER32 collet chuck in the holder and that's mounted onto the tool post and the X position is zero. So the the spin the the axis of the collet chuck is in line with the axis of the spindle of the machine. And uh, off camera I've faced off a piece of aluminium and I've just turned the, the diameter just to get it running true to make sure that my DRO is correctly calibrated. Um, so I'm just going to make sure that I'm at X zero there, which I am now. And so what I'm going to do now is at low speed, um, I'm going to just do a quick boring test into the, the middle of the part. I'm going to plunge into it with the slot, slot drill, which you can do with a slot drill. You can't do that with an end mill. I'd have to have a pilot hole there first. So just to illustrate, and I'm seeing this for the first time. Um, I haven't tested this chuck out off camera or anything. So I'm seeing this for the first time along with you. So let's give it a go. Just set my Z0, which is there. And I'm going to use the slow feed, slowest feed that I currently have configured on my lathe. So I'm going to auto feed the carriage in as well. OK, here we go. that's five millimeters in depth. So I'll retract the carriage now. So that was all very quiet and uneventful. Um, there was nothing of particular concern going on. So there. what I've done here is I've set the slot drill so that the, um, so that the cutting edges are uh, just, just past horizontal so that I've got a very slight rake angle um, in this direction, if that makes sense. 
And the reason I, for me doing that is so that now, now that I have a central bore in the in the workpiece, which I'll I'll move the camera back around now so that you can see. So I have this 10 millimeter diameter bore and it's five millimeters deep. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wind the carriage outwards by one millimeter. And I'm going to repeat um, what I've just done. And, and I'm essentially going to use this as a boring bar now. So let's do that. So this time I'll bring it out maybe another couple of millimetres so we'll, we'll open this bore up quite a bit and of course obviously this doesn't take the place of a boring bar but what it does do is if I was using a, an even smaller slot drill then I could I could use a slot drill as a small boring bar over a relatively shallow depth uh, plunge depth. So that's all quite civilised. There's no chatter. That's really good. So in a moment, I'm going to take another cut and I will increase the spindle speed. And we'll take another two millimetres. absolutely no problems there. Two millimetres depth of cut. Let's see what happens. Well that was easy. Let's try something even bigger. So there's three millimetres depth of cut. Let's see what happens. Okay. Well, all that was, was a lack of coolant. So I could hear it was picking up. There was a some built up edge there so if I had continued then it wouldn't have ended well so the limiting factor there was the temperature that was just building up but there was no there was no vibration there was nothing that was a really solid piece of machining then so that, that was all really good here's another use case for the ER32 collet chuck so on the machine you can see that this is an ER40 collet chuck that's on here now and my collets for this chuck are a little bit limited in size so the smallest the smallest collet i have is five millimeters so if i wanted to put something smaller than that then i could make a reducer sleeve or uh, or something like that um, and i'd still be able to hold it in this chuck but there's a degree of flexibility now with this el32 collet chuck because in here i've put a 30 millimeter collet into the er 40 collet chuck lots of numbers going around here um so that that can fit into there like that and then um what i'm able to do then is if i clamp this down what i've actually got now is a smaller um clamping arrangement where i can put small piece of bar stock in so just to illustrate the point in the er32 collet chuck I have a one millimeter collet in there and here if you can see that is a one millimeter drill so that can go into there and then if I I'm being a, a, absurd about it you know I could actually hold something of that size on the lathe 
Now, I never do make anything of that size, but this just illustrates the point really. So that's that's another use case for the ER32 collet chuck. And in this case, it's sticking out a little bit far. Um, I would probably shorten the shank of this because it sticks out the back of the the, uh, the boring bar holder anyway. So there's about 20 millimeters that, that I could shorten off this and then I can move this closer to the spindle. Uh, but in any case, it shouldn't be an issue anyway because I'm not gonna be putting large forces on this anyway on a small piece of bar. Anyway, that's that's another example. Okay, well, if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking with it and thanks for watching. Um, just to summarize really, um, I'm really impressed with this. Um, it's really, a, I think this is going to be a game changer um, on a small lathe like mine. And um, th that little test that I just did then, I know that that would not have uh, performed as well if I was using a, a drill chuck to hold that slot drill. Um, so this has its place, of course it does, and for for drilling with a, a regular drill, this is totally fine. And this obviously, there's a lot of flexibility because you can change the diameter very quickly. That's the only downside to an ER chuck. Um, if you go from one size to another, it's not so easy to alternate between sizes. Um, it's not particularly difficult, it's just the inconvenience of having to swap the, the collets in and out. But it's not a major problem. Um, the major advantage of this is the rigidity of the setup. And as that little trial just showed back there, this is a real game changer for a small machine. So I would most definitely recommend this as a modification. Well, it's not really a modification, it's an adaptation um, to be able to drill with the carriage. Um, I have another video on drilling with the carriage. Uh, I'd recommend looking at that. And um, but I would definitely recommend this product, particularly from PV Tools, because the service is really good. Um, they're very helpful, and the delivery is very quick. And I think the prices are quite reasonable um, for the quality of uh, of the product. So I couldn't be happy with this. So uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, using this on some projects now, and uh, and I'll share that with you as I go. And um, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the subscriptions. Uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Please, con please consider liking and subscribing and, um, and you'll see more um, of this type of content if this is what floats your boat. And um, yeah, that said, thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next one. Bye for now.